So we're going to introduce the concept of the sign of experiments, or DOE. And I'm going to do it by um, talking about this model and in this case in which we want to uh, explore what factors such as enzyme concentration, temperature, pressure, etc., influences the yield of some chemical process that's going on in here um, inside the tank. Um, so we let's just imagine we have no idea how these factors, and I could write many more, but I just wrote six of them, like the operator or the tank, you know, the type of tank that we're using that may influence the yield of the process. So there's a number of questions that we would like to answer. And the first one is what factors have significant effect on the response? Not all of these factors may be uh, may have an effect on the yield, and uh, certainly not a significant. When I say significant, I mean statistically significant effect on the yield. So that's kind of the first question we would like to answer. The next question is what effect does, let's say, this factor pH uh, have on the yield? Is it a small or a large effect? Is it positive? That means that if I increase the pH, does the yield then go up? Or is it negative? Does the yield go down when I increase the pH? So that's the next question. The third question is, do factors influence each other? And that means, does the effect of the enzyme concentration depend on the temperature? So that at low temperatures, the enzyme concentration may increase uh, the yield if it's high and at high temperatures the yield may go down if i increase the enzyme concentration so is there like a you could say a second order dependence among the, the factors here this is what we call interaction and the fourth goal is to find a model that predicts the yield the response here uh, for a given combination of factor levels uh, so now we introduced a number of uh, concepts here. The first and probably the most important is the concept of a factor. So over here we have six examples of factors that may have an effect. So that's the next that's the next concept that's important. So a factor has an effect. It may be small or large. It may be significant or insignificant. Um, but it tells you how it influences the yield. Um, and then we have the concept of interaction. So that is, does the effect of a factor, let's say the pressure, does the effect of pressure depend on the temperature? So that at low temperatures, the pressure, increasing pressure may uh, have one effect on the yield, and at high temperatures, it has a different effect on the yield. That's what we call interaction. And uh, finally, we're talking about levels of the factors so that we think of each factor as having a number of levels, typically low and high, but you could have more than two levels. But we will only deal with two levels in this uh, course here. So each of the factors have low or high levels. Now, a uh, traditional uh, thinking in this type of problems would could lead to an approach which is well if i want to find out how the enzyme concentration affects uh, the yield then i should keep all the other factors constant that is at a fixed level and then vary only the enzyme concentration and then track kind of track you know the enzyme concentration and the yield and see what kind of dependence is there between y and and the enzyme concentration and then i can move on to the temperature keep everything else constant and then vary the temperature and see you know how does the yield depend on temperature and i can move on to pressure and so on this uh this involves a lot of measuring and uh it doesn't even guarantee that you get a lot smarter because um so let's say we're just varying the enzyme concentration, but what's the level of these other uh, factors here? What level should I choose? 
and since I keep them fixed, I, it would be hard for me to tell whether changing the level of the temperature affects the enzyme's effect on the yield, if you see what I mean. And also, what kind of model would I extract from these plots here? So it turns out that there's a wiser and more clever approach to this. The object is, of course, that we want to extract as much information as possible doing as little work as possible because work is time consuming and expensive. So we don't want to do any more measurements that, than necessary. So let's look at the approach. So in this video, first of all, I'd like to limit myself to three factors just to keep the video not too long. And let's see what the design of experiment tells us to do. So here I have my three factors and I'll call the enzyme concentration A, temperature B, and BH, C. So the model that I want to obtain is one that gives me the yield knowing the value of the enzyme concentration A, I'll call it X1, so that's the enzyme concentration I'll have another parameter, beta 2 times x2, so that's the temperature. Beta 3 times x3, so that's the pH. And then we have interaction effects, so I'll have another parameter here, beta 1, 2 times x1, x2, and beta 1, 3 times x1 times x3, plus beta 2, 3 times x2 times x3, and finally beta 1, 2, 3, oops, times x1, x2, x3. So this is a model that tells me what the yield is if I feed it the levels, the value you could say, of each of the uh, the enzyme concentration, the temperature, and the pH. And it also takes into account the uh, interactions between those uh, factors and the total interaction between the three factors here. This term here corresponds to finding out whether the enzyme concentration affects the way the temperature affects the pH effect on the yield so it's it's a you know it's a third order term and it's uh, <clears throat> oftentimes it won't be significant but we'll return to that so that's the the model i want to do and um, as you can see there are eight parameters that i want to compute that means i need eight observations uh, eight pieces of data to compute those eight parameters um, if I have eight pieces of data, then I can compute those parameters, but I won't be able to do any statistical analysis on the model. I won't be able to say if it's a significant model, if it's a um, reliable model, so to speak, statistically. Uh, if I don't have eight pieces of data, I won't be able to compute those parameters here. If I have more than eight, then I'm able to do statistics on, on the parameter values here. So the approach is that um, I need I need um, a combination, all possible combinations of those three factors at each level. So let's just imagine two levels for each factor. So the enzyme concentration could be at a low level, 0 0.001 molar, and a high level, 0 0.1 molar. And I'll refer to those as minus one and 1. Likewise, the temperature can be at a low and a high level, 20 degrees and 35 degrees. And finally, the pH can be at a low level, 4, and high level, 8. Now, these levels are not really important in themselves. The only uh, the thing that matters is that I have a high and a low level of each factor. And the idea is now to um, choose or Design your experiment so that you test all possible combinations. So you want enzyme concentration at low level and high level, 
the temperature at low level and high level, like that, and the pH at a low level and high level, low level, high level, low level, high level, low level, and high level. So altogether, I mean, so each of these branches represents a combination of low and high levels for each factor. And as you can see, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, treatment combinations altogether. And we have a naming convention for these treatment combinations. This combination, the first one here, you can see that enzyme is at high level, the temperature is at high level, the pH is at high level. So we refer to this combination as ABC. The next combination has enzyme and temperature at high level, but pH is at low level. So we call that AB because factor A and B are uh, at a high level and the C is at low level. So we don't mention that one. For the next combination, this one here, it here this one we have a and b is at low level and then c so that's an ac combination and let's just try this one here that one here that i'm drawing here has a low high and low so that is the b combination only factor b is at a high level um, the last one down here that has everything at a low level should be called nothing, really, but that's kind of impractical, so we'll just call it one, like that. <clears throat> so let's put this into a, a table, which is, that's practical. <clears throat> so here we have the three factors, and there's a systematic way of assigning levels to each of these factors, which I'll show you now. So the enzyme concentration we want it at low level, high level, low level, high level, low level, high level, low level, high level. So eight of those, because I know I'm going to need eight. There are eight combinations all together. And then the temperature, low level, low level, high level, high level, low, low, high, high. And then the pH finally, low, 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 low high, 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 and high. So this systematic way of assigning levels to the, the factors ensures that we get all the combination. And I can write the combinations here that this one is low level altogether. This one has A at a high level. This one has B at a high level. This has A and B. This has C. This has A and C. This one has B and C. And the final one has A, B, C at high levels. So those are the names of the treatment combinations here. But we also need uh, the interactions. So we need to keep track of the products of these factor levels here. So let's just look at A and B interaction first. So the product of A and B is minus 1 and minus 1, so that gives me 1. And down here, it's 1 times minus 1, so that's minus 1. Here, it's minus 1 and 1, that's minus 1. And 1 and 1, that's 1. And so I just keep adding A and B in for each combination to find the AB uh, column here. And I'll do the same for, for the other interactions. The AC interaction the BC interaction, and finally, the ABC interaction here. And the ABC is just by multiplying all three of the coefficients here, minus one, minus one, minus one, that gives me minus one. One, minus one, minus one, that gives me one, and so on. And then finally, I have room for the uh, response to the actual measurements that I've been doing. So let's say I went out and did this combination here, AB, with high enzyme concentration, high temperature, low pH, what yield did I uh, get there? Uh, let's say 63%. Um, and then I go out and measure 
the BC combination here with high temperature and high pH and low enzyme concentration, I got, let's say, 51% and so on. And it's actually important that I go out and do these combinations in random order. I shouldn't just do them from the top. And even more important, if I do repetitions, let's say I make two measurements of each combination here, then I certainly shouldn't do, um, let's say, the two AB combinations uh, in a row, even though that's tempting because I've set up my system with a high enzyme concentration, a high temperature, and a low pH. So it's tempting to just do two measurements in a row. But you shouldn't do that because you want to randomize the order in which you do the experiments in order to avoid systematic errors. So um, so let's say I go out and do this experiment. I should, I should do some of the others. I should randomize the order, and then I do another experiment with the AB combination, and I get, let's say, uh, 65%. And altogether, if I do two replicates of each combination, I get 16 measurements. Like that, for example. Those are just example numbers. And then I'm ready to do my actual uh, regression analysis, find my model, and see what factors have significant effect and what effect they have, and their interactions as well. We'll do that in Excel in the next video.